Hello there, in this video I'm going to take you through a little walk through the wind schedule controls and components and explain how some of the functionalities work and how to wire them up to the ultra calendar info component. So I already have here on this form on the in the component area an ultra calendar info instance. This is where you want to start off when building a wind schedule based application. And by the way, wind schedule controls and components work together by combining visible views that are on the UI that are interacted with by end users to show appointments, um, owners, and various things that are going on like events, pretty much like an Outlook-like application. And then the calendar info component is used to tie all of them together so that they all fetch appointment data from one location. And you just have to worry about populating the objects in the calendar info component and synchronization of the current date as well as all the appointments that show up in the various UI views are handled by this as well. So let's start throwing some of the views onto the form. So if you go to the Net Advantage Windows Forms toolbox and look for them, you're going to find that there's quite a few of them. So I want to start off with the, let's just do this alphabetically. So we'll go to the, the day view should be the first one here. So let's find the day view and let's, we'll put it down here. The day view basically represents one day's worth of data. Uh, let's see what else. As I scroll down, let's find the month view multi. The month view multi is used for navigation typically. You can't really add appointments directly to this one, but it's mostly used for navigation. And the month view single is used for viewing one month's worth of data at a time. The month view multi can scale to show multiple rows and columns of months so that you can navigate them and look at a bunch of months at one time. Then we could find, as I scroll down a little further, we could find the timeline view. And you've seen the timeline view whenever you add an appointment in Microsoft Outlook, and then you want to check on the resources to see like, um, you know, if there's other people that are already booked for other meetings and stuff. That's what that one is. It kind of shows the appointments across the timeline. And last but not least, the week view. And if you're wondering, where am I putting these controls? What is this bunch of panels that I have on the form here? This essentially is the tiles view control. So the tiles view control, I've covered this in another video, but it's great because you could just throw it onto the form and just add tiles to it and then just stuff controls in there. And then you can manipulate them at runtime or even at design time like what I'm doing now to create a layout. And then this control itself manages the layout of all the other controls you place within it so it's really awesome one thing I want to do real quick I want to set the dock property on all of these to fill so let's do that right now because the panel control when, when the tiles become maximized or moved around you want the controls to scale according to the size of the panel that they exist within alright so that's step one getting all the controls onto the form all the scheduling related controls now what we need to do is hook them all up to the calendar info. You could do that through the smart tag, so let's hook them up and let's do that to all of them. You could even like select all of them and then scroll down and hook up the calendar info to all of them here. So these should all be synchronized, just check it out. Ultra calendar info, ultra calendar info, we're all good to go. All right, let's just run this and take a look because there's a couple of other things that I want to cover. I want to cover like some concepts such as how do you populate this. And by the way, you notice that the view that's showing up here is different, like the colors are different. It's because within my main method, I'm calling stylemanager.load and I'm passing in the path to one of the Infragistics app stylist files and this is the office 2010 blue theme which I like and I've included the styles so that they're in the project and their property is set to copy to output directory always so now that these controls are all hooked up and by the way notice how I could use the tile control to move them around and have fun with rearranging them kinda like playing a nice game here but then I can maximize these and then it pushes the other guys out to the side I can just keep flipping through the various views this way. So, and these are the various controls, like this is the calendar view where it's used for navigation. Notice how the other controls are all synchronized. So if I move this guy here, 
Uh, notice how I'm navigating throughout the dates, and all the other controls are showing the current dates as well as focused. And let's say if I double click on, let's say if I move this guy here and bring this one up here. Now let's say if I double click on this time slot and I fire up the dialog window, which is also part of Win Schedule. Whenever you drag and drop any one of these visual components onto the form, you're going to get this dialog built in, so it's really awesome. You can populate subject, location, and you know you could populate this drop down list with locations. Um, you can basically build a really awesome scheduling application with a lot of features that you need customized to your app, to your uh, company's needs. So when I save and close this, it essentially adds an appointment to the calendar info dot appointments collection. So the appointments collection property essentially is populated with those items and it's up to you to fill that up whether you want to use data binding or manually populating them with a for each loop so if you want full control you can use a for each loop and I'll show you how you can do that so but I just want to show you that if I make changes to this appointment the properties in the underlying and attached appointment object are updated within the calendar info appointments collection that the, the actual object that represents this individual appointment and notice how it shows up over here so if I like were to you know do something with this guy here like move it from there to there notice how it just jumped to the 16th and now it's here I could go back to it and view it so and then see here the 16th if I you know make this a little bigger because the view is kind of squashed you could see it here now so I could double click it and it's the same one and I could delete it alright now how do we handle create read update and delete well I'll show you one of the ways that I like to work with this. So if I click on this guy here and let's hook up some events and I have some events already there. So you want to hook up the let's take a look real quick. Before appointment removed, that's one of them. So before appointment removed, which is right here, it's already hooked up. And let's see what else we have. Then validate appointment. That's the other event that you want to handle or the ones I handle at least. There's a lot more stuff that you could handle um, but basically let's have a little fun and experiment to see when these fire. So before appointment removed, if you can guess when that one fires that's good and then validate appointment, that one's a little tricky. So let's run it now. Okay, I have my form, let's double click. and I press enter and let's see and save it so essentially validate appointment fires whenever a new appointment is added but notice how it fires whenever it's added through the dialog form so let's see if I double click. And this one's firing because I added an appointment but then clicked off and it's removing the appointment. So it added a temporary one and now it's removing it. So let's just continue this. So I'm going to double click. And I fire up this dialog form. So it's a little tricky. It might appear to be tricky, but it's there for a reason. It's there so that way you could handle various scenarios of when an appointment is added, whether it's added through clicking once and adding some text, or if it's being done by a dialog form. The reason is because, like, through the dialog form, you have more properties that are entered, such as a description. You know, you have the actual, all the other access. To, you have access to all the other properties available within an appointment. So that's that's you know one of the things that you can you know handle to save it to the back end. But the thing is this event fires again when you add a brand new appointment like what's going on now or when you update an existing appointment. So let's just stop this right now and take a look at what you should do in this event. In this event you have access to the actual appointment object, the Infogistics appointment object through e.appointment. So you want to do something with this. You want to basically either flip through its properties which are here like there's a bunch of properties available that you want to save so that way when you populate the appointments you can 
you know, hydrate them with your data from your back end, wherever that is, whether it's business objects or you're hooking up with, you know, if you're using link to SQL or data sets or entity framework, any of that stuff, it doesn't matter. But the biggest thing that you need to know is that this is where you access all the appointment properties and send them off somewhere. You may have a method, like, you know, I was, I was just playing around before and I created like a save schedule data. You could do something like that. E dot appointment. And then in here, you could like, you know, pass this, do something, you know, like very elegant where you can, um, you know, bring this to your, like you have like a business logic class that accepts this type of object and then you have logic whether or not you want to check if the key is null, then that you assume that's a new appointment, otherwise you update an existing appointment and that that's what you kind of do here. So that's how you kind of, that's how you handle saving and uh, creating new appointments and adding them. And the other thing that you can do, just so you know, there's a way that you can iterate through appointments. And then what you can do is you can test various properties to see what kind of things have been set. Like, for example, was it selected? Now you want to access the owner object. If it's an existing one, there should be an owner object there. Or otherwise, you get the owner key, get the recurrence. So there's a lot of properties that you can test. You could also stuff things in the tag. That's stuff I've done before. Like for example, say if you have the business objects that you're flipping through in a for each loop to create these appointment objects, you can stick it in the tag. Like for example, you could say, um, you know, the appointment dot tag equals that instance of the business object that you actually are referencing in your for each loop. You can do that. So that way, you can just cast the tag back to your business object and then perform any delete actions or whatever, or or save or add actions directly on the business object. Or let's say if a brand new appointment is added, there's there's um an after there's like a before appointment added and an after appointment added event that fires on the schedule info component. And what you could do there is use your business objects or your class library, whatever it is, to generate a brand new blank instance of an appointment and then stuff it in the tag and as as the end user populates it and saves and does things to it, just cast the tag back to your business object and stuff the fields from the Infragistics appointment object into the fields of your uh, custom domain appointment object and that's what you can do as well so I've done that plenty of times as well so these are some of the things again that you can just to throw some ideas out there you know some developer brainstorming and some of the things that I've done in the past alright so the next thing I want to show you is let's take a look at this one here before appointment removed um, and then load schedule data again what you could do is you could basically fetch your business objects from wherever they are and then you want to do is something like this first you want to populate the owners because so you want to basically add your owners so it's a key or the key and a name so you could do something like this and this the key has to be unique and then you know display name so that's how you add a bunch of owners in there and the owners are the people the resources like conference rooms or things like that that you want to add that you want to schedule within an actual appointment. After you do a for each loop and you populate all of the owners, then you can go and populate the appointments. And then you add them. This basically is a little bit more, you have to uh, write a little bit more code to create and instantiate an appointment object, but you could essentially just you know, do something like this. And then you could add, you know, the two required parameters into the constructor. Just add a date, just so it's, you know, to change it up a little. And then you could add, um, populate all the other properties, which I showed you earlier here before. So you populate every one of these properties or whatever ones make most sense to you. But at the minimum, you need a subject or a you need to set the subject the, and the owner key and whatever other ones that you need to set to make it a meaningful and the data key as well. Because remember these exist in your database or whatever back end as well so you may want to be able to query them as well. So, And then the thing you want to do is you want to basically add them to the appointments collection.
just like that. And remember, wrapping this up with a for each loop and you're populating that. Once you have appointments in your appointments collection in Ultra Calendar Info, then you're going to see them within the views. And then before appointment removes, you do the same thing here. You could have like a delete appointment or something, like a remove appointments. You could do something like this, and then whenever this event fires, you can call it e dot appointment. You could also, you could also, you know, perform a test like you know message box. I mean, you'll get, you'll get a prompt before that. But if you wanted to do something, you know, you could cancel it. You know, there's an e dot cancel in here as well if you want to do that. But then again, in here, what you want to do is. You want to basically test the key or, or get the key of this and then delete the actual appointment. Or again, you could do something more like a dot tag. You want to cast this to your business object and then send it off to your specific class library that accepts only the, the business object types that exist in your domain object model. So you could do that as well. That's stuff that I've done as well too in other applications. Where I'll cast a tag to my business object. My, my very own appointment business object, then get its primary key or whatever it is, and then pass it off to the, the appointment dot delete method or whatever it was from my data manager class, from like a code generator, from like a you know ORM generation tool. So that's that's many different ways. Th these are many different ways that you can manage these. So then when I let's say if I run this, and let's say if I have an appointment in here. And if I add the appointment here, and it's an all-day event here, then I let's say if I delete it, notice how this fires, and then if I do quick watch, we'll notice here test. It's my test appointment, and these are all the various values that you'll find within the APIs. And by the way, when you don't assign a specific owner, the unassigned owner gets assigned to it so it's like it, every appointment will always have an owner no matter what you do whether you sign one it'll be yours and if you don't uh, the Infragistics developers set it up so that it's the unassigned owner because it has to have an owner of some kind so that's how that works just in case you're wondering so now that you have a good idea of how all this works you'll be able to pretty much come up with your own scheduling application or add scheduling capabilities to your existing apps like think of all those basically you know all those apps out there like for scheduling appointments or for monitoring events that are going on and for scheduling events there's a lot of different use cases for this so I've even seen people make apps that have nothing to do with really like human appointments it's more like process like process driven stuff which end users enter appointments in here like uh, I don't know fire off one job and fire off another job and then another process or another um, another service out in the enterprise picks up whatever was entered by the end users and it just kicks off and runs jobs that way so I've seen people do that as well throughout the many years people have been using this so now that you have a good idea of how all this works make sure that you take advantage of it because it's in your toolbox and as you can see it's very powerful and it looks beautiful Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.